Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Now this is just a quick follow-up video on my GX12 review because there are a couple of questions I've had afterwards around comparing it to other radios. So I'm going to do that in this video, mostly this, the T20. But I also want to talk about ergonomics a little bit because I've had questions on that. And I just want to cover some things that I didn't talk about in the video. I glossed over a couple of things because I just assumed you would know but some people don't, obviously. Just things like backpack support, stuff like that. So I thought I'd do a quick video to cover it. So let's get on with it. Let's go to the overhead. And I'm probably going to have to go and turn on a light because this is a bit dark. So give me a second. I'm going to do that. You're going to see some behind the scenes stuff in this video today. What you wouldn't usually see because I'm going to try and not bother to edit this one. So first thing we're going to do is compare it to the T20. Because I had a lot of people asking me, what's it like size-wise compared to the T20? Why didn't you compare it to the T20? What were you hiding comparing it to the T20? And the truth is, I really didn't think. I compared this to the other sized Radio Master radios. I was a massive user of the Zorro, so I, I compared it to that. I'm currently a massive user of the Boxer. So I thought of felt I'll show it to you compared to other sized radios. I always knew this was a similar size to it. You can see that from the dimensions online. And I just never really thought, hey, let's put it up against the T20. So here we go. People ask for it, you can have it. As you can see, it is a very similar sized handset. There are differences, obviously. Width-wise, I'd class them as the same. So they're basically the same width. Height-wise, the Radio Master is a little bit taller, mostly as a result of that uh, screen on the top. But it's not dramatic. You can see side by side, they are very similar radios with regards to their overall footprint. Now, the T20 does have full-size gimbals compared to this, which has the new GX01s. Although I will say the throw feels the same. Whilst the outer side size of these gimbals is a bit smaller. The throw really isn't. The throw is no different. I'm not going to measure it, but th there's no discernible difference on throw. I'm classing these as full-size gimbals. In my head, these are full-size gimbals. There's not a lot between them and the AGO1s even. Uh, they're certainly not mini gimbals. It's, I'm more than comfortable with them basically being classed as full-size. Um, I'm not going to go over all of the differences in switches between these. You can see it from there. Really, if you were happy with the sizing on the T20, you'll be happy with the GX12. Gimbals are about in the same positions. As for the ergonomics, there are differences between them, and we will talk about that in a minute as well. Um, but yeah, really, there you go. That's the sizing compared to the T20. Now... The next thing I just want to talk about before we talk about the ergonomics is a couple of little features that I sort of glossed over, which I assume people will know. Yes, it has backpack support. So it fully supports the Express LRS backpack functionality. As I said in the video, it works with 868-900 and 2.4 gigs. As I did show in the teardown for this, you do have these new gimbals. And if you do take it apart you will need to calibrate the gimbals. There is a special app for that. I'm not sure what the score with that is. I don't know if it's factory or I don't know if it's going to be public. Um, I've not had any issues with the gimbals, though, on this radio. I've only used it, obviously, in a very limited period of time, but I have no concerns over that single sensor compared to, say, the dual sensor design that you have here. There are other radios that use this kind of setup. You've got the TBS Mambo. All of the TBS radios basically use this single hall sensor setup with a magnet compared to these. There is technically no reason why it should be any less reliable. I know people have had calibration issues on the TBS. I personally don't believe that's down to the sensor. I personally believe that's more down to the setup that they've got, not the sensor itself. What's great about the gimbals on these is they are up to 1,000 hertz. They're actually synchronized with the 
rate that you select in Express LRS. One cool feature is, you know, when you set it to F1000, it samples at 1000 hertz. When you set it to, say, F500, it samples at 500 hertz. It samples to match the Express LRS rate, as far as I understand it, which is really, really cool. Obviously, this is the first radio from Radio Master that has this new setup. So, you know, we don't really have information on longevity of you know, problems like calibration and stuff like that. You know, we know what the AJ ones are like, but I have no concerns and I would have raised them in the video if I did have any. Probably the only thing I could have said at the end as one of the, the action points was, hey, you might want to take into account that these gimbals are entirely new design and we don't know about the longevity. But I don't think it's necessary to point out things that could go wrong unless there's absolutely no data for that fact. Because you could also say that button there could fall off over time because that's the first time they've used it. So you have to be fair on those things. But yeah, so it's got full backpack support and it's got that cool features around Express LRS as well, which is really nice to see. Now, there has been some questions on, on my channel about the ergonomics of this for pinchers. Now... I am a hybrid pincher, so my natural flying is that, okay? I, I see, I seem to be either between there or there. I, can, I move my fingers around constantly. But that is my natural position. Uh, that's, how I, uh, that's how I fly. Let me flip my hands over. You can see I got my little, my little fingers are by there. That way I can grab that, but I do tend to move that out of the way there. Um... That that's that's how I fly the boxer. Now, before I had the boxer, I was a massive fan of the Zorro, and one of my complaints with the Zorro, and this really wasn't anything that was highlighted by people, was that finger position when flying like I do for hybrid, and and my complaint was not the fact that the switches were here, there really wasn't enough space to put your fingers without touching these wheels. For me, I just found my fingers were always on these wheels, which meant they were basically not usable. That was the problem I had on this radio. You know, you couldn't use them while I was flying like that. And I always, and what I never liked, and, and, I, and you'll see it there, because my fingers are on the wheels, it always felt like my finger would slip because it's on the wheel. That was never comfortable for me. Let me just get my hands right. That's fine. But I just felt my finger was always on the wheel. And, and this was an inherent design of the Zorro. It wasn't a major issue for me. I think I might have mentioned it in the review. I don't recall if I did 100%. The buttons were fine. Switches were absolutely fine. It was just the fact that my finger sat on the wheel and it was in the way. Now, there's obviously been a lot of talk around the GX12 with this, and genuinely, in my use so far and my testing, I've not found a problem with any of this up here. So, I'm going to show you me holding it as I normally would, so which is there. Now, my fingers are basically there. I'm not on that wheel, so I'm not covering that wheel so my finger will slip. I can feel those front buttons, right? So you can see my finger is on there. I can feel them, but I'm not pressing them. I personally, as a hybrid pincher, I'm fine. I've got no issues. It is a little bit of a stretch, but I've got no concerns of these switches here. You know, that, that's fine. You know, if I want to flick off the arming switch, there we go. You know, for me, that's armed, that's disarmed. That's how I always fly. Uh, I've got, honestly, no concerns at all. No issues with that switch. That switch is quite far in. In fact, what I would say is that one's a little hard to reach without... You can do it, but you might end up sort of stretching your finger a little bit. I can see that one being a, that movement, basically. That's not really one I'll use in a quad. What I, what I set my radios up for is arming. This is usually my beeper. Lo, you know, beeper, um, so off, beeper, flip, turtle mode. And then I might shove an R a mode over this side here, or I might use one of these down here for the modes, basically. Um, but as for how I feel about the shoulders, I I'll be honest, I, I don't think there's a problem. I, I honestly don't think there's anything here that I 
even would highlight or did highlight in my review because I'm just not noticing it. This was far worse. Anyone who's flown the Zorro, who's a pincher, this was just a nightmare because my fingers are on them there and, it, you know, they're always moving. You can see my fingers moving there because I'm, I'm on the wheels. So I always felt like that. Now, I don't hold a radio. I, um, I have it on a neck strap. I always do. I always have a radio on an extra app. But for those who asked, I think from I don't personally, as a hybrid pincher, have any problems. I don't feel I'm risking my fingers up against any switches. I'm used to that, being honest, um, because most of the radios have switches up here now. There ain't a radio that doesn't have a switch up here. You know, I'm there like that. The nice thing is I'm not on the wheel. My finger's sort of on the edge of it, but I'm not resting my finger on the wheel, so I'm not rolling that finger. I'm not touching that button at the top. I can press that if I want to. I am resting my finger up against that switch edge, but I'm fine. You know, again, I, I, I don't have a problem with that. Um, I'd, or For me, that's spot on. I just I I just don't have any concerns at all. About the only thing I could probably say is it might make that button unusable. Maybe. I can feel it. I'm not pressing it. So for those who've asked, I'm fine. Uh hybrid pincher, that's what I am. This was far worse. So if you were happy with the Zorro, other than it, and and if your concern on the Zorro was the fact that you were rolling on the wheels then this is better. What I will say is this is a chunky radio. You certainly do feel it in the hand. You know, it's not quite as big as the Boxer, but it's it's not a small radio. You know, it really, it, it is a chunky piece of kit. But, but yeah, so, um, I, I, I don't really know what more to say on that one. I, I think, for me, it's fine. I, I, I just... Everyone's obviously going to be different. Everyone will have their own interpretation and their own feel and their own what they like and what they don't like. But the reason I didn't really bring up anything in the video is because I genuinely don't think there's any problems with where your fingers go. I think there's plenty of space up here, loads of space. And if you did think you've got a problem with one side or this is the other, you can always use the blanks. You can you can get 3D printed blanks for these now as well. They are already on Thingiverse. Someone has shared... Um, I saw 3D prints for these already, which is quite cool. So, uh, yeah, th that's that. Now, I'm trying to think what else I was asked. It has backpack. It's got trim switches. All the usual stuff. Um, speaker is good on it. I didn't really mention that in the review. The sound of the speaker is pretty good. Welcome to HTX. One of the better... Warning. Actually, one of the better ones, if I'm honest um definitely one of the better ones but um yeah i think about as i said about my biggest complaint was these things do like to fall out you just got to be careful with them they will fall out oh something else i failed to mention in the review was uh, these two bolt holes down here there's two down here trim center and there's two up here radio master have a um like a chest stand that you can screw into the bottom that keeps it mounted off your chest trim center trim center trim center trim center just checking all the trims are correct um and that helps keep it off the body it's an accessory you can get it i don't know what the top two holes are for that hasn't been explained to me yet so um yeah interesting but that, that's what the ones down the bottom there were for. So, Other than that, I don't really think there's a lot more to say. Okay, so that's really it. Um, I'm not going to bother comparing it to the T15 and the others because they're the same size as this. You don't need a comparison. You know, you can't compare it to every radio on the market. For those who wanted to see it compared to the T20, sorry I missed that out. I just really, genuinely never thought that I'd need to compare it. I just thought similar size radio, people will, will get that. Um... Just while I've got you, this arrived today from Cardex. Yes, I have the repeater. So I will be talking about that very soon on the channel. So if you're interested in seeing that, me do do make sure that you are subscribed. Oh yes, and for all of those DJI lovers out there, 
don't forget that the 12 days of Christmas, 12 days, 12th, 12th of December, that's gone. But the 12th of January could be a very interesting day, so keep your eye out for that one. Look after yourself, stay safe, and I will speak to you soon.